<laughs> One for the blooper reel. Hello. This is John Richard Klein, the cassette master. And today, I got a little box from... Ah, stupid tripod! This tripod's retarded! <laughs> today, I got a box from John Clark. And we'll be showing it on here nice and clear. As you can see, I've covered up the addresses. But, you can see here, opening of this box must be recorded to Betamax or Hi8 format and uploaded to YouTube. I decided to go with Betamax and right now I am recording on my Sony SL5000 Betamax VCR. To use the cliché term, quote, without further ado, unquote, we're going to use this deadly weapon to open up the box and reveal what's on the inside. First, I'll see if there's any other little messages from John Clark written on it. Nope, just that one message. I remember before I got a package back in, was it 2010? Um, it was a... Uh, cart machine from a radio station and the box instructed me to record it on the direct freaking uploader I had to use direct upload for that particular video but for this one it's either to be on Betamax or Hi8 video and I decided to go with Beta I have a very high amount of Betamax tapes I can record on so I'm going to use Beta <sighs> That would be bad, but quite something to witness on the video if it did happen. I don't want to cut the inside of the... I don't want to cut the contents either. Hopefully my voice is coming through good. Okay. How is this box closed exactly? Let's see. Okay, it opens up right there. Oh, the paper goes up over it, so it kind of covers up that part. It makes it look like it's part of the box or something. How exactly? Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's reveal the inside. I don't want to show the addresses. Let's reveal the inside. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? First of all, we can see we have a mechanical pencil. With the lead already sticking out. Who knows when this pencil is from, but it seems quite old and quite dusty. Wow, that is ancient right there. It's an interesting specimen to add to my pencil collection. Ugh. <laughs> Gotta blow off all that dust. And now, very useful XLR jacks. Because I only had one XLR jack, and the one XLR jack I had, I think, was something like this type. Although it was less metal and more plastic or something like that. And the reason why I need these XLR jacks is twofold. Yes, I use the term fold. One is right here on this U-Matic S Sony 
VO-6800 UMATIC VCR portable. It has XLR inputs and outputs for the audio. The one you can see plugged in right now is the only XLR jack I had before I got this shipment. And, interestingly enough, that only XLR jack I had actually also was from John Clark from whenever he sent the cart machine, it had an XLR jack hooked up to it. I then unsoldered it from there and made a little adapter cable with it to put the other side to a one-fourth inch phone jack, just a mono jack. So now, with these XLR jacks, I'll be able to plug in to the inputs and outputs and be able to do stereo audio recording and playing, of course video included, on my Umatic S machine. I might transfer some of the professionally recorded tapes that were done to it to the computer at some point, but my computer is a piece of crap and likes to put all kinds of messed up pixeling artifacts in the video and just mess up. My brother needs to come defrag it because I'm not a computer whiz and I don't even remember how I don't even know how to defrag a computer. The other reason why I needed the XLR jacks was for this Sure Prolog microphone mixer given to me by Johan Clark. John Clark, JRC Studios. As you can see, it's a pretty neat old mixer has its share of dust because it is an old mixer of course being a vintage mixer don't know when it was from and at some point in time somebody had put a flower sticker on it not my kind of style but um anyway someone put a flower sticker and a pink thing right there so uh <laughs> and uh, the only uh, original label you can see under the knob is mic4 slash aux and then there's the power switch, and of course, an indicator LED. If we take a look at the back side, you can see that the jacks, other than these two RCA jacks, are XLR. Let's take a good zoom to look at it. You can see the 12 volt DC input. The aux in and aux out. And then you see the uh, microphone out, low impedance. You can select either the auxiliary in or mic number four for one of the input parts. The others are simply microphone only inputs. This microphone mixer is made in Korea and it is a model 200M. You can even see the serial number stamped right there. Not stamped, but a sticker. Sorry. All the feet, rubber feet, are intact. So let's, let's get all, all our little XLRs. And so... Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, wait, sorry, I wasn't showing it on the camera, so, uh, that, cause there's something with a question mark, too. <laughs> it makes it all the more hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> These kind of pencils here are kind of pencil that my dad had years ago. See, this one might have been damaged at some point. Maybe not. Oh no, the tip seems pushed in. Let's see here. They're old. It even sports a green eraser. And this other one is fully intact. Properly. It's a Pentel PD345. My dad used to have a pencil like this. My dad passed away four years ago, and um, he was a geology professor at Arkansas Tech University, and he appreciated nice mechanical pencils. And my dad used to have one like this, and this is very special. Has some LEDs in there, so I should be able to... There we go. That one's clicked out the lab. 
Now let's try the other one. Well, it has no LEDs in it. Okay, we also have a classic BIC. 0 0.7 millimeter. This one's made in France. That's good. Most of the ones I'm finding lately are made in Mexico. I want to get some more that are made in France. This one's out of, oh no, it has one LED in it. There we go. Let's see, is it the, class, the type of BIC where it goes in easily? No, it holds on. Remark well, it went in that time, but it does hold on a lot stronger than some other BICs. Here's this kind of infamous Papermate mechanical pencil. This one's oddly enough, un no, never mind, it is labeled. But these pencils are notorious for cracking and breaking. My brother has a set of these. I used to see these kind of pencils at school on the floor and stuff. They would always be cracked and broken. And then there's this interesting kind of pencil right here. It's the it's not your typical like mechanical pencil. It's a part with different lead pieces. <clears throat> you push in, in one in the back to reveal another one. I think it's missing one of the leads, so they don't all come out. They have another one at the house though that I could get a, a, a piece to make it all in. This one I think is complete. Pull it out, push it in the back. This is obviously old, worn out. Yeah, these both need one extra thing in them, but I'll just get them out of a spare that we have at home that has a lot of its leads all. Oh, wait, one of them's out here, right here. Maybe the other one's lying around the box. Maybe it came out during shipping. Okay, this one has all the, all the things in it. Yeah, one of them must have. That one came out during shipping, I think. Okay, anyway, it's an interesting uh, copyright 2012, believe it or not. So this is brand new. The plastic on here is very, very brittle. The eraser, quite interesting. The eraser has a hole in the middle of it. It's very odd. And this plastic thing here is cracked. I might have cracked it. Probably did. I think I cracked it some more, unfortunately. The plastic used on here is incredibly brittle. But it's from the year 2012. I don't know how well you can see that. Wait. Oh. There we go. Lucasfilm. Can you believe it? George Lucas. George Lucas. Wow. Now there is a really close up shot, I've got to say of what it says on here. Maybe I could use this to show all, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Star Wars, oh man, hell oh, that's just too good, that's too good because it reminds me of my friend George who absolutely loves Star Wars. And then you can now look at the Bic really close up, we can actually clearly see where it says France and we can flip it over this is a very good close-up this is unbelievably good close-up big pencil 0 0.7 millimeter HB number two don't they nowadays say pencil number two point seven millimeter I don't think they say it quite like that anymore I'll show you a more modern one now this one's clip is purple, but it might look blue on the camera. This one here's clip is blue. Notice, now this one's kind of rubbed off. I found this one sitting on a windowsill at my circuit analysis 2 class. Left and deserted. But it's lead goes in too easily. But anyway, what I'm trying to show you is this one says Bic pencil number 2, 0 0.7 millimeter. Also, this one's made in Mexico. This one says Bic Pencil 0 0.7 millimeter HB number two. So there is an interesting difference to notice right there with these pencils. Now, while I'm at it, I want to show you a very interesting specimen with the Bic out of my already have had collection. I'll show you this one too. This is a vintage one. You can uh, better and more clearly see how 
it's different from these two pencils. The one John Clark gave me pencil 0 0.7 millimeter HB number two versus pencil number two 0 0.7 millimeter. Interestingly enough, actually, wait a second. Never mind, that's close enough. Um, but let's show this one. This is another old one I already have. I showed it in that last video where I had a deep voice from the cold. It just says Big Pencil. Can you believe that? It's crazy. Wait. So you can now see these three different kinds of Bics. These now all three of these are made in France. You can notice the differences in the labelings on these pencils. That that's pretty peculiar. These pencils have maintained their basic form factor the same since the 90s or whenever they were introduced. I don't know when they first came out, but they've been this way for so many years but there's minor differences in, this, in the way it's labeled on the clip. You can even see the size of the Bic, the, the Bic Man logo is larger and closer to the edge on this one and on this one it's less from the edge and smaller on both these units from I believe the 90's. This one I'm not sure when it was manufactured. There's no telling. While we're showing close-ups, let's show close-ups of the Pintel. I don't know how well you can see this. Probably not that well, but it says 0 0.5 Pintel Japan. On there it says PD345. You can see even the LEDs inside. And the mechanism for the pencil. For some reason, the metal sleeve is not sticking out on this one. It looks as if it had been pushed in. You can also see that this part of the pencil is sticking out a little bit. And actually, it's been cracked at some point, so this one's gone through a little bit of damage. You can even see an old green eraser. Anyway, those are my ponzels showing from John Clark. And now, a little box with a question mark. So you'd wonder, well, what could this be? A little question mark, so elegantly written, so carefully written, so well written, with a sharpie, no doubt, onto this clear box. Open it up. I'm expecting it to be some kind of electronic component of some kind. I don't so know what else it could be. Maybe it's a chip or some odd chip or transistor of some kind or Oh! Oh! <gasps> The original knob to the Voice of Music 760. Wait, sorry, I need to get the delicate sounds of this. I had to get the delicate sounds of that. Here is, the vo here is the Voice of Music 760. I did get it working and everything. Put a new belt in, cleaned out deteriorated belt from the flywheel and everything. I even got a proper round belt installed and the machine works good. And also have a meter, a new meter installed. Because the old meter was just wouldn't do anything at all. The meter is not the same. Uh, rating as the original would be so it's not fully accurate but it does work the only problem I'm having it with is it. the only problem I'm having with it is is that the ridiculously expensive rechargeable batteries I got from Radio Shack for it 
won't hold a charge for very long. I'll charge it all night or so and it will run for a while and you can use it for a good amount of time after it's been recently charged but after it's been sitting for a while the batteries will self discharge over time and that's a common problem with rechargeable batteries I have nickel metal hydrides loaded in them so you pay these this huge bucks for these ridiculously overpriced batteries at Radio Shack and they won't even bother to hold a charge there you go come on Radio Shack and come on rechargeable batteries and manufacturers of batteries do a better job anyway now for the ceremonial putting on of the original knob onto the voice of music model 760 you can see right here the replacement knob I had put on because the original one had been lost remember John Clark gave me this recorder it was while I was over at his abode for the time during the analog listening party on March the 26th 2011 it was a fun time and I was very happy to get this recorder I remember first seeing pictures of this model recorder on the internet and thinking man that's a nice recorder and man I want one anyway now that we have the original knob we can show the application of the original knob with first showing the, remo the removal of the replacement knob that I had put on this knob I can use on something else it's for the smaller the very thin kind of um the stick I'll call it whatever I'm sure there's a, a rod the thin rod pots I could use this for another thin rod pot I guess I got several thin rod pots I could use it on a project but anyway I'm gonna put the original knob on so Without further ado, let's uh, get out the Allen wrench and go to town. This is a delicate surgical procedure here. Now the application of the original knob. Wait a second. There we go, that way. One and seven eighths. Yes, I actually use this machine at one and seven eighths. Because, uh, there we go. The audio quality actually isn't that bad at one and seven eighths. It's very good at three and three fourths, but of course I'd like longer recording time. And this one sounds good enough at one and seven eighths that I use it at one and seven eighths. I don't use it that often, and the reason why is because that deal with the batteries not wanting to hold a charge for a long time. Otherwise, I'd use it a lot more often. But it's a really cool recorder, and it's a very it's it's American made. It's an American made portable. Okay, put it this way: an American made battery powered reel to reel, and those are hard to come by. You don't see that very often. The the few you see is the old GE reel to reels, the Steelman transit tape. And of course, this voice of music, but you don't see it very often. Most of the time, they're made in Japan, or if you get lucky, find one that's made in Europe. But if you're living in the United States, it's not so easy to find one made in Europe. Of course, I'm sure if you're in Europe, it's easy to find one made in Europe, and it's just taken for granted. But here in the States, finding one made in Europe is like hitting a jackpot. Most of the ones here are made in Japan. Anyway, and now I got the original knob on my, see, the batteries are so dead, I need to recharge them again. That nose, you know, that nose is merciless. When you have a cold, the nose is merciless. And now, what I want to be showing, oh yeah, also another thing I didn't specifically show is this adapter, a stereo plug you can uh, splice on the wires and then a, a plug-in thing that splice on the wires now uh, what I'm going to be showing now in this video is riding tests with the ponzels before I get to show riding tests I'm going to do some simple surgery one pencil I already have but was didn't have its thing was my tip was an identical pencil like this in much better condition than this other one where the metal piece had been put in 
but I don't think that's the main concern is the metal piece is because right here um, it's pixelated I know because of digital zoom but it's cracked right there you can see the crack and you can see a gap right there where that parts coming out of the actual pencil body so I'm gonna put this end piece from that that pencil onto this pencil right here now I wonder why that metal piece was the way it was did the metal piece really get pushed in or what exactly happened there? Well, anyway, let's let's put it on this other better condition pencil here. Get it on there nice and tight. And now let's transfer the eraser from this one. It's dried up. Yeah, I probably just have to replace the eraser altogether. And it will go on this one. But before that, we're gonna get some leads here. get four leads put it in the pencil yeah I like sink pencil in a fun way you might notice on the same ponds and stuff like that ooh comes out quick it's not the only pencil I have that does that though. Do it carefully though. It does hold the lead. So there we go. I'm still wondering, maybe the tip could be pushed back out. Well, I couldn't get the, the thing pushed out. Wait, where's the camera? Uh, but, um, still, um, they're both good pencils now. What I am going to do though is I want to get the. Well, let's see. Maybe not. I'll just leave it like this. Okay. Now, let's have further ado. Let's um, perform some writing tests. My special random note folder where I like to write random notes for well one is I just like the way it feels to write with the different pencils and two I like to write these notes where my friend Evan could later on read them into a tape recorder anyway in this random note folder with all kinds of random notes all having the date up at the top such as September the 6th 2012 or September the 13th 2012 September the 14th September the 14th and September the 26th, the most recent one. Actually, not the most recent one. The most recent one was done yesterday at school. But anyway, oh, that reminds me of something today, September the 20th. I'm going to have to show something on this video. This video is going to be made a little longer than I thought for a good reason. Uh, let's just say someone got three checks. Okay, anyway. <sighs> Or someone didn't actually get three checks. Someone got a check. But anyway, we're going to be doing some writing tests with these pencils. Maybe I'm going to show more of the paper like that to show the full across that line of the paper. And I'm going to put the microphone up close to the notebook, clip it onto the ring of the notebook, so you can hear a very good uh, hearing of the actual pencil writing sounds you can see where the microphone has been placed and now we'll be using the pencils first is this no-name pencil the first pencil I pulled out of the package it's a pretty good feel with its clicking Pretty nice pencil.
spelled pencil, P-O-N-Z-O-L, Ponzel. Nice. I am using this Ponzel blue colored from John Clark. It is 0.5 millimeter. Just in case you couldn't read what I wrote there. Now, if you're seeing a blue line kind of thing across the bottom of the screen, like right here, that's not from the, the Betamax recording itself. It's from the computer's relationship with the Betamax, if you want to put it that way. Wait, this piece of lead's short. Nice Ponzel. And now let's try the other one with the kind of messed up tip without the the metal sleeve and the lead coming out quickly. Oh yeah. And it works just fine. Of course, if I were to try out the erasers on here, they would do a bad job because they're so dried up. There's nothing but smear. I'm going to try out the eraser on this one here. As long as I... Okay. Still, not very good. It's also old and hardened. Now I'm going to try out the Bic. Actually, I want to see if I can better erase that. An old pink pearl had since the first gray. Not this one. There's another one. Well, I might have used the same one in the first gray, too. A little better. Not perfect. Okay. Now for the Bic. It has its characteristic strong click sound. At least the first click is. It's like that on some bits. mini Bix. <sighs> now for this infamous paper main one. One that is known to crack. Break. Now, 
this one, the Lucasfilms one with the brittle plastic. I don't know why they made the plastic so incredibly brittle on it. But anyway, let's try it out. Oops, I put an A instead of a U. head was there, it was probably the whole time. We'll call it switch tip. The lead's really wobbly. And I could test out its odd eraser that hole down the middle. Let's see the thing is oh it just came right off. If I try to put it on there stronger it would just crack more. But it actually does a fairly good job erasing, believe it or not. If the only made the plastic more strong that would be nice. And now this sparkly pink one. needs an extra thing in there but anyway yeah now the sparkly pink one <laughs> now before I'm done with this video which normally I'd be done with it now I was reminded because it's September the 28th 2012 I'm going to show you something from the third grade this is my third grade math book um, arithmetic three I mean by a Becca book. This is page five. And it's incredible. It's simply incredible. Um, let's take a, a look at just some of the third grade work. Now this is a very rare actually. A lot of my old elementary school work was thrown away by my mom against my will. But this is one of the few surviving um, of the old elementary work. I used to have stuff from the first grade and stuff, but that's long gone, unfortunately. I really wish I still had it. There's my handwriting. Oh my gosh, the curved U's, the curved D's, the curved A's. Eventually I grew out of that. I decided that was dumb and didn't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, or the the curved tail end of the letters. You know what I mean. You 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 learn how to write like that whenever you're a little kid, and then later on you're like, I don't want to write like that. And it's just amazing. And you can see back then my sevens weren't crossed. I cross my sevens nowadays because I think it looks cooler. And it's just. Oh my! <laughs> oh man! Anyway, Michelle's mother bought three feet of ribbon for Michelle's new church dress. How many yards did she buy? <laughs> Three feet. How many yards? Which each yard contains three feet. It would have been yard one, but I put two. I got it wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. So 
Lord, it's September the 28th, 2012. Come into this. Page 55. We'll have to venture there. No, I kind of want to show you some more stuff before that, but then again, it might take too long. Oh, actually, I want to show you this real quick. Sometimes when the teacher would assign work, there were some problems that we didn't have to do. She would tell us we didn't have to do, for instance, the number one section ad, we didn't have to do F, G, H, and I, and J. So if I didn't have to do one, I would cross out the problem, and I would put an S as the answer. There are some instances where I would put something, for instance, like S1000, S100, SES. For some reason, I had something for the letter S. Anyway, let's venture on to page 55. By the way, this is from August 24th, 2000. I liked to doodle, as you can see some of it right there. And um, today is September the 28th, 2012. I almost forgot about doing this, but I'm glad I finally remembered. Because one of the drawings, at least for my memory, was something I always remembered, and that was called Mother Three Checks. Now, I never got three checks. But, in the school system at Abundant Life School, where I went, um, in elementary, if you goofed up in class and you, you know, you did, you, you, you misbehaved, the teacher would give you a check. They would write your name on the board, put a check beside it. If you goofed up more, they would give you another check. And if you finally misbehaved enough, they would give you three checks. And if they gave you three checks, you'd have to go to the principal's office and get a paddling. Now, I never got three checks before. There were the instances in the fourth grade where I'd get two checks. That was rare. But I would get checks uh, relatively often. Maybe not that often, but I would get them every now and then. Anyway, this is probably the first day in the third grade when I actually got a check. And I was not happy. Um, very unhappy about me getting a check. I was angry. Unhappy about it. So the doodling would tell the story. And I would always remember this particular drawing ever since. For some reason it stood out. Anyway, Ricky Klein. September the 28th, 2000. So you can see, today marks the 12 year anniversary of this of what's called Mother Three Checks you'll be seeing soon I would have got a check that day I got a check that day on September 28, 2000 and today is the 12 year anniversary of that that is unbelievable Twelve years ago today, I wrote that down. And, and you can see I wrote check right there. And that might actually have been this kind of check instead for that case. But I did get a check. And from the check, I drew this doodle. It's a guy who's sad. who thought about the time when he got a check. Because I was sad and I got a check. Then, there's another sad face there. Then there's another sad face, crying. His tears turn into thought bubbles, or maybe he's just crying and thinking about... I originally put a circle and put three checks, because this crying person would have got three checks and would need a paddle. But then I drew the three checks and it looked like a face. And drew hair the body, arm holding a paddle. And I call that Mother Three Checks. And Mother Three Checks 
there's thought bubbles going to something there and that's baby three checks right there baby three checks thinking about whatever this is another check and something with the paddle because mother three checks had the paddle to paddle baby three checks and that memory the memory of that drawing has been in me since the time it was done it was just a very special drawing and um, now of course that guy is sad about the time we got two checks and so now that it's September the 28th 2012 I had to um, include this in the video since I'm doing it on September the 28th 2012 and this was done in September the 28th 2000 this might not matter to any youtubers out there but I want to get this on video this celebration of this because um, it's just special so yeah it's my third grade math book um, quite something and of course sometimes the year I would put would be completely different I would put 20,000 and um, we, we would even grade our own work I would get out the red pen and the class the teacher would call out the answers and all the people would put a check or an X depending on whether they got it right or wrong and um, yeah I was experimenting with them um, this kind of two every now and then in my life I would uh, do that kind of curly Q two normally I would do th that kind of two right now I do that kind of two but there were stages in my life I would switch to that two then back to that two to that too but mainly would be doing that too yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video the long video perhaps more than an hour long and by the way this was um, the work I did on my 10th birthday right there and um, it was about geometric figures this Z was not crossed in the third grade that cross was put into that Z later whenever I was looking through the book a long time ago from today but a while from when I originally did it because back then I didn't cross my Z's but um like if you look closely that you can tell the cross you probably can't really notice it on the camera, but whenever I look at it carefully, I can tell the cross was done with like a different pencil or it's like slightly darker or something than the original writing. Okay, enough about that mumbo jumbo. Yes, mumbo jumbo. Anyway, a big thank you to John Clark for sending the Ponzels and the knob for the voice of music and these XLR jacks so I'll finally be able to um, use the mixer and also the, all the XLR stuff on that Umatic portable machine. Anyway, uh, if anyone's watched this video the entire way through, please give a comment telling me so because it's one of those ridiculously long videos that if someone's actually going to sit through the entire time to watch it's like really really I was surprised that other video I made showing my desk and stuff and I had the low voice and stuff and showing pencils and stuff some people watch the entire thing I was like wow actually watch the entire thing anyway It's now time to press stop on my Betamax.